Hi, and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. Just recently, I've been doing a daily sketching challenge for myself just to improve on my sketching, to experiment more and to explore the area and try and find some sort of new way of getting into my sketching practice and linking it with my painting practice. This is the sketch that I did on day one of that old ramshackle boat. Um, I shall link to that sketching video here below if you're interested in seeing it. But I thought you may be interested in seeing what I actually did with that sketch. And this is the painting that I ended up with. And I'm really pleased with it. Um, I think I've um, really enjoyed capturing the atmosphere and sort of bleak, uh, deserted nature of uh, this sort of abandoned boat and this deserted beach. So today I thought I'd show you the next stage after the pencil sketch and um, show you the line work sketch which I do with waterproof fine liners. So we'll go through that stage so that you can sort of see how you can get more life and more tonal value into your sketch uh, ready to paint it. Um, the first thing to say is really important that you make sure that your fine liners are waterproof if you want them to stay nice and sort of um, want your lines to stay nice and crisp. Sorry, I couldn't think of how I wanted to explain that. Um, sometimes it's good to use um, non-waterproof ink because that will run and flow and add to the effects but the effects that I want here is just simply an outline and some shading. I'm using um, one of my go-to brands for this. I like two brands at the moment. One is Faber-Castell which I'm using here. They are the artist pit pens and they're filled with Indian ink um, it's waterproof, the nibs are lovely, you get a good selection or you can get a good selection of different types and sizes of nibs which is really useful. And the other brand that I like are the Pigma Micron fine liners, also waterproof and, and they also come in a really good range of different size nibs to suit every sort of purpose for this kind of drawing. The size that I'm using today is a 0.3 millimetre nib for most of it and then I use a, a 1.5 millimetre chisel tip nib to put in the dark, the dark shading. And you can probably see how important it is that you're happy with your pencil sketch, with the proportions of whatever it is that you've sketched and the way it's sort of fitting on the page. So therefore um, the composition, because once you start inking in your outline and your shading, then it's really difficult to make any adjustments. So, as I said, make sure you're happy with your line work and use an eraser just to correct anything that you, you think just may be slightly out of proportion or not quite right. And then when you do your line work, uh, the more you practice, the more you will discover your own style of line work. There's no wrong or right way of doing this. Um, the only right way is what you enjoy and the way that you like to um, see the marks on the page. And it's no good sort of trying to copy the style of marks that I make. I've been drawing all my life and I'm, I'm 62 now. So basically 
I've spent that long sort of just scratching away with my pencils and pens, practicing and enjoying this sort of really scribbly, sketchy sort of style. And the more you sketch, which is why I'm encouraging people to take up this one sketch a day challenge, the more you will discover your own style. You may discover that you really don't like scribbly, sketchy sketching, in which case that's fine. It's um, then just start sort of producing cleaner lines, find ways to shade so that you get that sort of clean, crisp finish that you're looking for. As I say, there's no wrong or right way to sketch. But it's something that the more you sketch, the more fluent you become and the more your preferences will help you to develop your own style. You can see how the chisel tipped fine liner that's I think 1.5 mil chisel tip is giving me these immediate stronger lines which are really bringing the paint the um, sketch to life. Those dark tonal values and shadows are what add depth and dimension and with the line and wash um, we are creating a lot of the dark values, nearly all the dark values, um, with our fine liners. If we choose to, you can take a lighter touch and um, just use the fine liners for outlines and maybe a little bit of shading. Um, that's quite a, you know, a style that's used quite a lot. But I like to use my fine liners to get in and block out some of the darkest shadows for a really strong contrast. And then I generally use my paint application when I put the washes in, mostly for light and mid values, leaving some of the white of the paper for the remaining light values.
And I also find that if I'm not planning to paint my drawing, then putting in these strong dark tones can really make it stand up well as a drawing um, by itself without without any colour added. The tonal values are then what will give it um, more nuance, more shape and more depth and dimension. If this was a standalone drawing, I think I'd put a lot more texture into the foreground and probably into the boat as well. But I'm going to be just painting this with a few um, a few really rough and ready um, washes to add some atmosphere to this. Um, I won't be painting it on video. I'll be painting it off video um, because this really is sort of a lesson to talk about the line work. Um, when you do the line work, you can, of course, then um, paint it in any way you choose. So I'm just about finished. I think there's just a bit more sort of cross hatching of the hull here, a bit more, a little bit more shading. And then this is how I have left it. And um, then what I usually do is just leave the drawing for a while and think carefully about it and try and decide what approach I want for the painting. And this is what I ended up with. I really enjoyed the reference photograph, which you're, if you're interested in seeing that, that's included in the drawing video, which, as I've said, is linked in the description below. So take a look at that. And so I decided to be inspired by the really sort of painterly, um, an artistic quality of the photograph for my final painting. So I hope it was helpful seeing how I build up the line work on top of an existing pencil sketch like that. If you're a member of Patreon, don't forget to share your beautiful sketches and paintings in the private Patreon Facebook group where we can really enjoy seeing them. And um, if you're not, then you can share your work on um, Instagram using the hashtag, hashtag Lois Davison Art. I pop over there every couple of days and I'll be able to see your work. So thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to our wonderful Patreons who support us and support this channel. And if you want to support the channel, um, then please um, hop on the link and go and support either Morgana or myself on Patreon. And welcome to all the new patrons. It's wonderful to see you over there. So I'll see you again soon. Take care and happy painting. Bye.